and welcome to the show. This is Patriots Lament. The next hour, we're going to be talking about the liberty and about, you know, the world that we live in and current events. Things like that there. I'm Steve Floyd, the man with the face made for radio and the monkey behind the machine, so to speak. Joining me in the studio today on my opposite side here to my right is Dave Giesel from the Campaign for Liberty. And on his right, my left... Josh Bennett, the owner of Big Horn Enterprises, or I should say one of the owners. Good morning, gentlemen. The centrist. Is that what morning, you are? Steve. Can I be the centrist if I'm in the middle? Oh, no, you're you're to my left and he's to my right. I'm to his right and your left. Oh, well, well. It all depends. It's, it's kind of a round table, though, so there's really no way that any of us can be centrists. <laughs> <laughs> Anybody who's listened to the show knows we're not sent <laughs> <laughs> All right. Welcome. Uh, gentlemen, what is on our collective mind today? So many things. I think that we have uh, come to the conclusion, well, maybe not a conclusion, we have a question to ask the listening audience if they care to participate. What good has voting done you? What good has voting done us? What good is the vote? Yeah, yeah, I mean, even last... even more specifically, why ha- why hasn't it worked, and what would make it work, and what does working even mean? How much longer should we keep voting to get it right? You know, here's a, we here's have a T- TSA context. Context. Let's right. start with the context. And by the way, the phone number, if you want to participate, is four five eight talk four five eight eight two five five. The context is is that uh, this last week we got word that the TSA, that's the Transportation Security Administration, that that organization that we were told, no, 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 this is only going to affect air travel. It's not in any way, shape, or form going to in- interfere with people's ability to drive in between states. Well, now, uh, guess what? It has. They have started putting up roadblocks where, where, where basically everybody has to stop, and they are checking people's vehicles and checking to make sure that people have the correct papers. I mean, I swear to you, it's right out of Nazi Germany. This is the same thing that Frank Turney and other people warned us was going to happen back when they passed the Patriot Act in 2001. And a lot of people are like, no, 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 that'll never happen. Well, it has happened. And these people that we have elected are the ones who have seen it through. And allowed it, uh, not just allowed it, they've forced it. They're the ones that did it. They passed it. You know, They're the you, ones that put them in power. You might ask yourself the question, what would be the last straw for yourself on a personal matter? You know, At what point do we realize that we are living in a totalitarian regime? At what point will we try to leave, flee, or you know, rise up against the government? What are our options? At what point, what's the last straw? And you asked a very good question, Josh, to me before we started this morning. Well, why does it have to be the last straw for us? Why not these people that we elected... This is how we're supposed to change the system, right? You don't like it, you elect someone. That's what they keep telling us. You participate by voting. <laughs> and, right. And yeah. Not only are they stopping people in Tennessee in their cars, they're also the TSA is uh, different train depots now. As you're leaving the train, they're checking you. Wait, after leaving? You get off leaving the train. the train. Right. They're searching you after you leave the train. So to make sure a, that you took everything off that you left, that yeah, you, you came on with, or is it? Whatever. Who cares what the reason is? I also read a blog from a guy the other day who uh, drove from New Jersey to Los Angeles, and he was actually stopped. He didn't. I don't remember that he gave the states that he went to. He was stopped three times by TSA on the roads and searched. So it's not just Tennessee. This is happening right. across the nation, that they are stopping people randomly. Because it's not, I, I understand it's also not every single person actually has to get checked. No, it has to be a random... Um, it's actually kind of an old law. If they, I don't remember how it goes, but yeah, that's why it has to be random. There's something that has to do with, I mean, why? Mm-hmm. Who, who knows why? Mm. Why that is a law where they have to do a random? Actually, I think maybe it was backwards. It used to be it's, if it was random that it was wrong. They had to check everyone, otherwise they were discriminating. Right. But who, you know, the government can discriminate. It's okay. Just you and I can't. Right. All right, so that, that's kind of the, our starting point for the conversation this morning. That's the context. And so we're asking the question, what good has voting done us? Does it matter what party you belong to? Does it matter who we actually send to Washington or, or for that matter, who we send to Juneau or who we send to that building across the river from us here over there in the borough? You know, I was just thinking what you asked, where is our, where do you draw the line? I was reading this thing by this guy. He said, he said uh, 
History has shown that mankind is more disposed to suffer while evils are sufferable than to right themselves by abolishing the governments they are used to. Didn't Thomas Jefferson say that? Yeah, that no. was yeah, 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 yeah. Declaration of Independence. All right. What's and how that? true is it? Yeah. <laughs> how true is that? It's, well, it's, it's certainly more true than uh, not. I'll, I'll give you that. Here's what it makes. This actually makes me upset. The other day, uh, I don't remember, you had Mr. Kawasaki and another. Wh- who was the other representative? I had uh, Steve Thompson also at the same time. That okay. was about a uh, week and a half ago. I called and asked a question about. Uh, the judge uh, Stewart had just thrown out the evidence on the 241 case because they said, you guys don't have a warrant. Out it goes. And I don't want to quote word for word, I guess. But the, it came back to Representative Thomas, is that his name? Thompson. Thompson no. said, well, I think that's terrible. We need these officers, need these tools to do that. I think that was a bad decision. Really? Michael Anderson was released from jail yesterday, rightfully so. I'd like Mr. Thompson to come down to Mr. Anderson, look him square in the eye and say, that decision was wrong. You need to go back to jail. Then go over to his wife and say, that decision was wrong. He needs to go back to jail. And tell his kids that, too. Or maybe he needs to go to jail for a while and see how it is and get to realize how important our liberties are. How dare that guy say that... A violation of our rights. I mean, the judge said, good for the Judge Stewart, too. Mm-hmm. Congratulations to him for doing something right. Maybe the first time in his life. I don't know. But he did something right. He stood up. His only job, the only reason we vote, is to put people in office to protect our rights. This guy followed the rule of law, followed the state constitution, and said, this is bull. If you, don't, if you don't have the evidence to hold somebody, you can't hold them. And our representatives say, oh, how terrible. What about the tools of the officers and the police? Bull crap. Well, or is that anywhere anywhere it, in the mindset of being free, the mindset of liberty, uh, anywhere in the Constitution, anywhere in the Declaration of Independence, any state but constitution? But doesn't the Patriot Act supersede the Constitution? Exactly. Doesn't it? Allow, yeah, he, I mean, was, he was actually upset. Um, essentially that there wasn't a state Patriot Act that could supersede the state constitution also. And you'll note the uh, the DA's letter about yeah. uh, the release and everything. They were whining. The letter was this big whiny letter about how there's this ambiguity in the law and it's confusing because the state law is more lenient than the federal constitution, which it actually isn't. It's just the federal constitution now has a bypass tool called the Patriot Act. And so basically they were lamenting the fact that there's no state Patriot Act to bypass the state constitution. Right. Well, and so I want to ask the question. This is the question that needs to be asked. If the state has said... This judge, and it was he's a Superior Court judge, and this was uh, held up, obviously, because they let Michael Anderson out of jail, and the state dropped the charges. So if it is true that our state constitution is more strict and protects our rights more, why are federal agents allowed in the state of Alaska to prosecute Alaska state citizens under the Patriot Act, and why isn't our state officials... Our legislators, our governor, our law enforcement, our judges, any of them saying, uh, no, our state constitution provides these rights to these people. Out you go. You know, but if you did out that, if you, go. if you did that, if you tossed out the FBI, if you tossed, then you'd also have to toss out the National Park Service people, okay, because they're doing the same thing I'm out sure, there. I'm sure that. Jim Wilde would be happy about okay. that. Yeah, if, if, you, if you tossed out those people, you'd also have to toss out all of the EPA people, all, oh. all, all of the inspectors, all of the feds that come around and tell us what we can and can't do with um, our air and our resources because it doesn't fit with their what they think we ought to be using it for. I bet the Healy Coal Plant would not mind about coal well, mine wouldn't you worry know, about that too much. Yeah, we might actually have affordable energy, but you know what? That would conflict with the federal view of what we are supposed to be because remember... The feds, I really think somebody that lives in Washington, D.C., a person who lives maybe even in uh, Oregon, might see Alaska as kind of a, I don't know, maybe a park. Maybe Alaska is a, a, a place for future development. Maybe we are, maybe we're a colony. Maybe. Sure. Well, yeah, ab- absolutely. I mean, that's how that's absolutely how they think now. I mean, most of the advertising for these things comes from out of state just for that reason. You but surf? For, uh, political advertising. <laughs> but but even beyond that, though, 
there are, there is a contingent, and most of the listeners of this station probably fit into that, who have this um, rosy view of states' rights, right? They'll, they'll go out and pontificate about nullification and states' rights, and the state stands between us and the feds. And my question would be, where are these people on the issue Josh just discussed? Well, and, and on, on that same on that same note, at what point do states' rights ever even exist? Because if our elected officials don't stand up, indeed, if our if our elected officials do not step forward and say, "I'm sorry, that rule does not apply to us," if our elected officials do not give marching papers or a blue ticket, if you're not familiar with what a blue ticket is, look into that. That's okay. a beautiful way of dealing with things. You ever heard of a blue ticket, Josh? No. Dave, you ever no. heard of a blue ticket? A blue ticket was the one-way ticket on the ferry out. Of Alaska. This is how they used to deal with troublemakers in the territorial days. The mayor or whatever uh, people in the community that got sick and tired of the troublemaker would give, go out there and buy them a blue ticket and say, you're going to be on that ferry and you're leaving and you're not coming back. Hmm. And uh, so it's just something to keep in mind. We've got... Uh, we need a few thousand blue tickets then. <laughs> well, before we go to them, let's ask a question. I want to know what is our state government for? Why are we voting for them? Why are they there? Why do we have it? If someone can answer that question, actually reasonably tell me that, and then something that satisfies me at all, you doubt if you're going to be able to. <laughs> but I mean, why do we have them? If they're, what if, is the purpose of government? Yeah, if their purpose is just to rubber stamp everything that's federal, why don't we get rid of them and save the money and time, right? Yeah. And and roll up the carpets in Juno and and call it a day. Well, it and, would and also it, it would, would be save money in terms of the elections too, because would, we wouldn't need yeah, elections. It would it would be a, a net benefit if they're just going to rubber stamp everything federal. But if there's this myth or uh, oops, I just revealed my my opinion. <laughs> if there's this idea that they're going to stand between you know us and D.C. or whatever, and that the states have rights over the federal government. I mean, that's a cute little idea, but how? Show me. Well, I, I, I do realize that they do important things like uh, Ted Stevens Day and uh, passing Marmot, laws. Marmot Day. We got uh, we also got Wally Hickel Day this year out of out of Juneau. And passing laws against uh, synthetic marijuana or whatever. And passing I mean, laws fighting against fighting for the rights and liberties of the citizens of the state of Alaska. My golly! <laughs> yeah, right. Give me a break. They're a bunch of chicken livered literally pieces of crap. All right. Wow. Tell us how you really feel. Four five eight oh, talk. And, uh, four five eight talk is the number we got. Of the phones. Good morning, caller. Who's this? This is Al. Al, what's on your mind? Oh, you guys got so many questions this morning. Well, on uh, why do we have state government? Probably the foremost thing they only do is set a budget for the state. Yeah, and how good are they at that? And how good are they at that? But that's. <laughs> Oh, they can't get they can't get it done in their regular session. They always go to a special session to get it done. That's, That's about all our state legislators are for. That's because they're busy passing more uh, holidays so they can get yeah. another day off. Now, to back to your voting question, probably as and you asked it very generally, and I would say very generally that it it's a good opportunity for people to voice their opinion. The bigger problem is is the courts overturning the people's voices. Yeah, but who have we voted for that's standing up for us, Al? Who, well, who's down there in Juno right now that's protecting anyone's rights in this state? Name one person, name one thing that they've done to protect our rights. I'll tell you, I would say Jack, not one of them. They can't even stand up to the TSA. When have they? Well, I think, and, and, and I'll give you one example, and he was in the very minority with Scott Kawasaki when he voted against uh, illegal search and seizures. Down. But he's a Democrat. You know? <laughs> yeah, and it was still. I thought it'd be a classic one to throw out there. He did do so. Yeah, he did, and I've congratulated him and thanked him for it. But it still passed. Our governor still still signed it. Oh yeah, well, it's it. a majority deal. Well, actually, I don't know if it's been signed into law yet. It might not have been. But the fact of the matter is, the majority passed it. So what good are they? All they do is pass laws against us. When have they done anything for us? And well, I don't mean, well, we got a little bit of money out of them. Well, we got a little bit of money for our, I don't our, care. Our, they built us a great bridge across the Chena River that connects the Barton. Oh, wait. What does that connect exactly? <laughs> Barnett with um, a dead end on the other side? <laughs> and you can't tax. Hey, they built us a bridge, though, Al, right? Yeah, we got a bridge. It's an expensive nowhere. footbridge at this point. Oh, you can't. No, it's not even accessible by foot. Well, at least we got and our bridge to nowhere. They blocked it off. All right, thanks, Al. I'm going to make my head explode. 458-TALK is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Randy. Randy, good morning. Just wanted to a answer the first question, what good has it done to vote? I would like to know. Thank okay. you. Okay. Appreciate uh, you calling. And I have to divide that question into two parts. What good does it do to, for freedom lovers to vote? 
and what good does it do for uh, progressives and communists to vote? And the answer is, it's good for freedom lovers such as myself to vote because it slows down the march of totalitarianism on the part of the government. And as far as the question of what good does it do to uh, for liberals and left-wingers to vote, it does no good and it does harm. But since they vote, i got to vote to counterbalance their vote. Really? Well, if I remember right, in 2001 is when the Patriot Act was passed, and that was controlled by this, a Senate and a Congress and a president that were all Republicans. Are those the ones that you're talking about protecting our rights and slowing things down? Because in the last 10 years, the slowing down sure the heck hasn't happened. It's been progressively going, going, and going. And you know what? We've had more people vote in the presidential elections in the last two elections than have ever done it In history, we've had more people vote. We've had more money spent to get people to vote, and we have a Patriot Act. And our rights are going down so fast, and they're, well, they're gone. They're not even going down. They're gone. There are no rights. Examine them. Take a look at the Bill of Rights, Randy, and and tell me which of those we still have. Well, they're they're threatened, and that's why it's important for freedom lovers to vote to counteract and counterbalance. How? would take away our freedom. How? Who are you going to vote for, Randy? Anyone that stands up for freedom. So you're voting for Ron Paul? Uh, no, not necessarily. I haven't made up my mind. Well, yet. who the heck are who the heck are you going to vote for? Perry, who had I like uh, Kane. Uh, Kane, he good. was the freaking president of a He's Federal the Reserve Bank of Reserve Kansas Bank. City. Yeah, I would vote for Ron Paul above Obama in a heartbeat, of course, but I oh. haven't decided yet. But the point is, is we freedom lovers have to counteract all the votes that the liberals make. We Why? Just have to do it. What's because, the point? Because if we don't then only liberals will vote, and they will vote for statists and people that will yeah, accelerate wait, the decline. Wait a minute. So, um, but who are the who are the non quote unquote liberals who aren't statists? Name a name a non statist conservative who you who you can think of. A voter Actually, or no, a name politician. two because I can think of one. A voter or a politician? Politician. Well, Ron Paul. He's a there's one. For the I can name that one. Name yeah. a second. Well, uh, uh, Kane uh, stands Wrong. for freedom. Well, no, he doesn't. He, does he is not. for state power. For many, free, for many freedoms. Uh, uh, no, 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 no. You don't get the cop out of many freedoms. Yeah. We, we we just mentioned the Bill of Rights, right? There's there's ten that are outlined there that are just examples. Name uh, someone else, one other politician ever in uh, existence Michelle who has stood Bachman for all ten of those. Michelle Bachman freedoms. does not stand for that. She stands for the TSA and Patriot Act. Well, Michelle Bachman voted for the Patriot Act. Michelle Bachman used to work for the IRS. She was a prosecutor that threw people in jail and took their homes from them for not paying their taxes. How is that a freedom? How, what does that have anything to do with any kind of freedom in any possible so we're we're Even, still at, we're still at one. What universe well, does that happen? We're still at one. My, we're waiting for number two, Randy. My, Throw us, my, give us my, number two. My point is, give us a second politician who stands up for all ten of the Bill of Rights. Oh, oh well, here, here, let me just say this. No, just a second one. Just just one more, Randy. There's there's 535. Uh, John you know. Cornyn, he's a senator from Texas. I like him. Okay, I'm not talking I, about who we. Uh... Uh, there's many. In other words, you don't have to be perfect to be better than many others. Just yes, just you do. <laughs> when it comes to my <laughs> rights, you have to be perfect because you do not have the right to violate one of my rights. Appreciate the no call, Randy. We're going to move on to some of the other callers this morning. Good morning. 458 Talk is the number. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Cecily. Hey, Cecily. Thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Perfect example right I'd like here. to read um, Amendment um, 4 in the United States. Constitution, the right of the people to be secure in their persons, houses, papers, and effects against unreasonable searches, seizures shall not be violated, and no warrant shall issue but upon probable cause, supported by oath or affirmation, and particularly describing the place to be searched and the persons or things to be seized. Describing exactly what things are going to be seized. How's that working out for you? Oh, the, there, there's not even a case in the court because they didn't uh, have a uh, I- any warrants or anything, and there, and the ACLU hasn't called him back yet, and and he's got um, applications for legal services. So the city government violated someone's rights. They violated n- her, her not our rights. They violated the oath that they took. They violated the contract that they signed when they agreed no. to, to be city well, officials. And just, they and only have compartments to where they stand up for their oath. Because if they, if they're part of the, this um, c- group of cronies, then they have to get permission or whatever none of them to stand, stand up. up for their oath. 
None of them stand up for their oath. If they did, they'd pack their bags well, and go and, home. And this, is, and this, by the way, that was the whole point that got the evidence against the two-for-one plot thrown out of state court, is because they had not issued a search warrant to come up with that FBI surveillance stuff right. to begin with. Well, that, Schaefer's a hero. He at least w- was willing to go to jail for his conviction. I don't know if I'd go that far, <laughs> but... Uh, but I, you don't want to go to jail for your... To stand up well, for he did go to jail for his convictions, but he also went to, uh, to jail because of uh, the the things that he said about uh, murdering people. And I think that there. Oh, th- that's you have, too bad about that. But yeah, ha- I mean, but that's the thing is, you kind of have to um, you, ha- you have to be really careful about your rhetoric. Yeah. And and and, yeah, and and this is you know once again further proof that we no longer have a First Amendment. Do they have the right to arrest you for that? Well, what he gives them the right to do that? Heart. It Why is can't forbidden you say what speech. You want to say? It doesn't. No, it is. You cannot say what you want to say because if you said what you want to say, obviously you are the enemy of the state because Why? you're not saying what the state is telling you to say. And we've. It's been proven that they got the evidence illegally. So if there's any oath takers out there that want to help, you know, the individual before, as or you know, maybe all the the people who do have junkyards want to get together and stop this before it happens. To them, because they'll pick you off one by one. No, and, absolutely. And and it costs ten thousand dollars to 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 a lawyer to even consider it. So you know, once you run out of money to um, stand up for the Constitution, then where do you go? Right. And and what have you heard this whole time that you've been calling in and stuff? The the thing that annoys me the most that I've heard. Well, that's what you get for living in the city. You know, you agree. <laughs> wasn't your uh, bro- your brother was there way before any of his neighbors moved in, wasn't he? Yeah, he. he um, bought the pay- place 33 years ago. There was only one other house. Right. So actually, the, the theory area. of uh, with the theory of uh, private property, he is the one that gets to set the rules, not the neighbors that move in afterwards and say, "Oh, we don't like this guy." No, I. What? what yeah, original appropriation. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, well, he had he had a business license for Dugan's Tiffany Auto for years, and then he took care of my mom. He had to move out uh, up to and take care of her for 10 years, and so when he was gone, it was vandalized and and uh somebody started a fire there and you know it's uh, and well before that even when he had cars on the street they would confiscate his the cars they were you know people's cars that he was working on and it was parked there and uh and then uh they would confiscate those cars and he'd have to bail them out you know and and it, it's it's been ongoing but before that even they took my my grandmother's all of her property through uh, rules of law and they you know, she had a boat once, and then they made a law that she couldn't have that boat. So, so uh, my whole family, I guess, we're uh, selling fish all over the city. <laughs> Real cheap. <laughs> Cecily, I appreciate your your call in. Can you give us your phone? Would you be willing to give your phone number on the air for people to call you to get in contact with you? Well, if they can help help my brother, I, he said I could give his number last time. Real quick, we got about five seconds. Five nine zero zero eight two six. Five nine zero zero eight two six. Thanks, Cecily. We'll be right back with more Patriots the Men. What's going on? The deadliest in the Taliban launching a string of attacks across as, across Afghanistan. The deadliest in Kabul. Five American troops, eight NATO civilian employees, and four Afghans were killed today when a car full of explosives attacked a U.S. military convoy. The attack happened in one of the most heavily developed areas of Kabul near the American University. Fox's Connor Powell in Kabul, and an early season snowstorm is dumping wet, heavy snow from the Virginias through Maine. It's going to be a very, very windy day, so we're going to be talking about wind uh, on top of the snow, on top of the trees, and that's why we're going to be talking about power outages that are going to be pretty rampant. Fox meteorologist Rick Reichmuth. Fox News, we report, you decide. Don't let your coworkers call it hate radio just because we question authority. We are KFAR, and we will keep on critiquing regardless of who's in power. And welcome back to Patriots Lament right here on KFAR. We are local talk radio. I am Steve Floyd, the uh, you call me almost a facilitator here to make sure that the discussion stays on track. 
Uh, joining us in the studio, of course, from Bighorn Enterprises, we've got Josh Bennett here, and we've also got from the Campaign for Liberty here in Fairbanks, we've got uh, Dave Giesel. Uh, the question that we've been considering today is what good does voting do us when we see that it is the people that we vote in who are most often the ones who restrict our liberty instead of standing up against those who would restrict our liberty. What good is our rep- what good are our representatives? Well, and who do they represent? I mean, do we vote them in to represent us to the federal government, or do we re- vote them in to represent the federal government to us? We vote them in to govern us. Mark. <laughs> well, I mean, that's you hear that that thing from Murkowski to single her out uh, as an example. She said that she couldn't wait to get back to the business of governing. Uh, she has made it very clear as she's been carrying water for the federal policies here in Alaska over and over and over again that she she's herself as a representative of the federal government to the people of Alaska. Well, I heard a Republican representative, federal representative the other day said that the president refuses to govern. Well, good. Good for him. If only. Yeah. Yeah. Hey. No joke. All right. We got all four lines on hold. You ready to go back to the phones, or is yeah. there something you want to say Good. first? Yeah, four, no, five, eight, through. talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who is this? Good morning, Frank Turney here. Hey, hey Frank. Frank. I have a whole mouthful uh, regarding, <laughs> regarding the vote. Uh, you know, I don't never vote for the lesser two evils. Uh, I vote my principles and my conscience. That's why I'm voting for the real godfather of the U.S. <laughs> Constitution Congress Day, and that's Ron Paul. Uh, Regarding our Alaska legislature, what we down, what we got down here, demo Republicans. I remember in 2008, they did something on the Patriot Act, but under the Obama administration, they have done nothing. And uh, regarding uh, somebody brought up the legislature, you know, I hate to say I, but sometimes it's proper. I remember a number of years ago, I recommended that these legislatures make laws that they go through a program of being incarcerated for 15, 30 days after being sworn in to an oath. And nice. I think that's a good idea. And uh, the other can, subject... can that be longer? Can that be like their whole term? <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. Isn't, that, isn't that kind of why we have them in Juno, so that they can pull in the drawbridge? <laughs> <laughs> right. Uh, regarding Matt Wont, uh, I wish I could have got in, but I was working in a situation where I couldn't get to the phone, but I was listening to radio. I was amazed after listening to Burl Assembly. Uh, Matt Wont praised him back. And he knew well, because I've talked to Mike Ron Beck's background when he supported the Patriot Act, ignoring our civil liberties in a resolution. Also, Tim Beck voted against a fully informed jury resolution that was introduced by Mike Prox. Also, I questioned all the candidates, as I do every year when they're running for office. Matt Wunt did not support jury nullification rights. And then he laughed at the industrial hemp farming. I said, can you help support that? And he wouldn't do it. And he said things like, what do we tell the children? Well, you tell the truth to him, Matt. You know, and so I wish I could have cornered that guy because he doesn't understand the Constitution at all. You well, might like the guy. He seems like a nice guy. We'll have him back on. And another thing, I just want to say one thing. Free at last, free at last, thank God, free at last for Michael Anderson. I want to thank the Bennett's for keeping his family warm while I was incarcerated. Thank you, Josh. Oh, they, yeah, he, here, had, here. he had lots of friends. Thank you. Enjoy your show. And uh, where's the Ron Paul's meet up here? It's at the Cut and Run on the Cornerstone Mall, I believe, Saturday the 5th. Yeah, uh, this coming well, I Saturday. I encourage those Ron Paul people to get out there. This will be our first big uh, meet up group. Yep, and we might have a, uh, a sine wave next week. We're kind of working on that. So. Okay, thank you, Dave. Yep. Thank you very much for Thanks, the call, Frank, Frank Turney. 458 Talk is number. Good morning. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Bill. Bill, thanks for calling in. What's on your mind? Can uh, you should, uh, suggest to that lady, uh, Stephanie, I think it was her name? Cecily. Cecily. Well, the girl that was just on about her prop brother's property being uh, hijacked. Yeah. Uh, I think what she ought to do is put cans around town and ask for donations from people who is, uh, 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 stand up for her rights and see if she can't collect enough money to uh, for an attorney. That's my suggestion. You know, we, we thank you. I appreciate that suggestion very much. Uh, we actually had, uh, on last Monday, we had the city mayor and the one of the chief engineers from the city on to talk about that particular issue. And there there's more involved than simply the, the city moving in and confiscating property. And it, there, there's, uh, I mean, if you, if you look at both sides of the story, it does raise an interesting question, though, because at what point does the safety 
of the neighborhood because that is really the main point that the city made that that's why they moved in it wasn't just based on complaints from neighbors because they had been getting those for for years and had done nothing about it it wasn't until there was a fire on the property that jeopardized neighbors homes that they moved in to force a change on this property and that, and that's kind of a question for for both of my freedom loving friends here in the the studio uh, at, at what point does does safety for your neighbors become a uh, an excuse? At what point? I mean, really, you're talking about property rights. Don't my property rights end uh, really at the end of my property if I'm jeopardizing my neighbors by either or or even bothering my neighbors? Aren't I infringing on their property rights? Yeah. Okay. Is that the I mean, there was a fire? Who was uh, injured? No one was injured at that time. Oh. However, however, but, the fire the fire so trucks had a hard time putting have, out the fire because they had they couldn't they, they couldn't get access to where the fire we was. We need to preempt. Well, it's a good thing we should go around and preemptively go to everyone's home and see if anyone has any reason that might cause a fire or prevent a fire to be put out to where their neighbor's house is going to burn down. Let's. In fact, let's just uh, go watch the minority report and let's take a few examples from them and get it. Let's really get it going on. I mean, the guy didn't just get the trash st- st- taken from him, did he? He said he got private property stolen. His actual personal belongings were stolen. And yes, stolen, steal, theft, thievery. That's what I'm calling it. It was stolen. And I, I would listen to, and I, I actually like Mr. Cleworth quite a bit. He's a good man. But, uh, yeah, whatever. We're going to just pontificate and tell ourselves that we did something. We did not do something right. Well, yeah, I mean, if it were the question of safety, that's like what came up. I mean, I don't know all the details in the case, but that's what came up. But they didn't just remove the the hazard, so-called, that made this a threat to the neighbors. They took other stuff, too. And so that raises a very different question than the question of safety. The question of safety at that point is like a cop-out. Yeah, because it basically turned out more to be a uh, question of an eyesore. The neighbors didn't like what they had to look at, even though I apparently had a big fence. I don't know. All right. Well, nobody complains if you if what you do to your property increases your neighbor's <laughs> property value. Yeah. But they do if uh, if it goes down. But he was the fir- he was the first person there anyway. You know, he was there first. Right. Yeah. So. Four five eight talk is the number. We go back to the phones. Good morning, caller. This is Patriots Lament. Who's this? Hello. Hey, who is this? Yeah, this is uh, Mike Blue. I'm the person that uh, was outright stolen from, and the city mentioned the fact that uh, in 2006 there was a fire here. That uh, nobody knows the. Uh, reason for the fire, and the fire was in the middle of the yard. And so I'm, I'm, and my electricity at the time was on standby, which is you have to pay X amount of dollars for the access. I have the ability to shut it off at the house. And then you can go back to my light bill and see that the month they shut it off. There was no erratic uh, meter reading on it or anything like that. Now, that was in 2006. In 2007, the uh, I went there to see if they would turn the lights back on, and they said they couldn't turn the lights on because it was a new dwelling. Well, I didn't need the lights back on at that time. I was taking care of my mom and dad, and so I didn't need the lights on there, and I let them be off. Now, in 2008, uh, the water freezes up here and they shut the water off the utility company comes out and shuts the water off and I say well what happened this this is August mind you and I said well when I dug it up uh, I found out that it was just frozen uh, in a couple of spots and I thought well how could it freeze you know Mike we don't have we don't have a whole lot of time here I need you to get uh, to the the crux of the matter the crux of the matter is how do you defend yourself now they have all of my stuff they send me notices to come pick up my stuff and uh gosh they cost money to pick up your stuff right yeah and they have all of my they have uh, a connex i don't know why they took the connex but it has all my personal papers and books and it's the only thing i could lock up on that place i've been replacing the i've done everything they've asked me to do i'm i got uh, house jacks 
I got everything to finish the house. It's all sitting in the yard. I mean, I had that. You know, they sent me a six-page letter or five-page letter told me what was wrong. And so I went about trying to get the things it takes to get it. And I, and I had it all. And here they come. You know, you... Uh, what was the I've deal with everything. the fire? You said the fire was in the middle of the yard. I mean, how, yeah, it was how did in that the start? Of the yard. So I, it wasn't like a, this wasn't a structure thing or what? No, what? this no, this did not burn any part of anybody's house except it might have wrinkled uh, the siding on uh, my neighbor's new house. So this but, was a uh, fire in the woods. Yeah, no, this is no. a fire in the middle of, of your, the yard. Of, okay. This is a so this is a yard that something. doesn't have and you weren't there at the time. Stuff in it. You weren't there at the time. No, I wasn't there. So when I arrived, um, I immediately put the fence up. The city came and asked me to clean up the burnt stuff. So I came in and I cleaned up everything all the way to the back. Uh, they met me on a their particular time, one o'clock in the afternoon. I had my attorney uh, was supposed to be here, but he was late and. When he did show up, he said, I'm sorry, I was looking for a junkyard, and, you know, there's just a fence here. What, is there anything else uh, we need to do? Hey, Mike, and, I, we're, we're short on time. Around, I need you to give out your phone number. Can you do that so people can call you if they want more and can get involved to try to help with uh, with your legal struggle? Thank you very much. I appreciate what, it. The what? number is 590-0826. All right, thanks, Mike. We wish you the best of luck. Four five eight talk is the number. We continue on with Patriots Lament. You know, as, as we can get wrapped around an actual an awful lot of specifics. The general principle that we're looking at here is that when we're living in close proximity to each other, then there, there's kind of a fuzzy line in between. At what point the right to do on on my property, whether it is collecting old cars to rebuild or or whether it is burning smoke you know burning wood uh, or burning with an outdoor coal burner uh, when it starts affecting our neighbors uh, yeah well it's interesting that he wasn't there and that the you know it wasn't an electrical fire like he pointed out it was it was some obviously some people started that fire right it didn't start on its own and it wasn't him right yeah so if damages were caused by that fire who's liable I, I have no idea but how that works. Maybe I mean, maybe the previous car owner should be liable. They wrecked their car and it ended up in a yard. <laughs> yeah. I mean, obviously the person who'd be liable is the person who started the fire. Exactly. Right? Yep. Except they don't know who started the fire. Well, does and that make they, is that is that his fault? If somebody went to my house and lit it on fire, right? I, I live right next to the woods. And I'm out, you know, I'm out in Fox or whatever. It could easily start all those trees on fire, which is what everybody worries about when those forest fires come to town. Does that make me liable because somebody lit my house on fire, so that's where the fire started? No. It's the it's the fault of the person who started the fire. That's I mean, what a, what a what a horrendous mulligan for the city to take. Well, somebody started a fire in your yard, so there's hell to pay for you. Isn't that isn't that really what? And you know, speaking of mulligan, isn't that really going to tie back into what we were talking about at the beginning of the show today? Isn't that really what voting is all about? Yeah. Well, yeah. Voting's a it, philosophical it, mulligan. It's it, like I don't want to I don't want to work out the the philosophy of freedom and how to interact with my neighbor and and how to settle disputes. So I'm just going to go in mono. I'm so just going to go and I'm vote for somebody, somebody to point yeah. guns at people to do that for me. Or, or I'm going to elect somebody to think for me, and I'm just going to support whatever they do. And then when and the easiest way to do that is if they have an R or a D at the end of their name, because then I know that they are a part of a party right. with which I agree on the. Oh, wait a second though, what exactly are the differences in the parties anymore? I mean, philosophically. Not a, and and yeah. then when they come point the guns at you, you have to basically say, yeah, they must have a good reason. Mm, exactly. Or you know what? I really don't like that law. So the next time I, I I'm, I'm going to have to. Because obviously the, the jury doesn't have a right to go in there and, and nullify the law. I mean, the, I'm going to have to the just... Both parties agree uh, that that's just, that's just a crazy idea. That is you. just crazy to think that somehow a jury can judge the law. And the jury is there to judge the facts of the case, right? Yeah, that would be so anarchy. What I, what I have to do if Truly. I don't like a law that's been passed that I think is unfair is I'm just going to have to wait until the next election and vote for somebody else who thinks exactly like everybody can, else around them? Can I go? I'm gonna. Can I go on a little rant about the laws too? Um, Please. There's. Okay, so we have this thing called uh, property rights and contract, right? They're ideas, and they're really simple. And all of the laws that get passed, virtually, are passed due to some violation of contract that has to be solved. Whether we're talking about 
um, the wood smoke ordinance or grandfather rights or whatever. You have you have all these forms of contract uh, like private property and and uh, doing business like fraud. You don't need laws against fraud. You already have laws get laws against uh, violation of contract. And so if contracts were enforced, which is supposedly the one of the two roles of government, protect private property and enforce contracts. It's the only two things that they're supposed to do. If contracts were enforced, you don't need the laws. You don't need the laws. All the laws that are passed are to solve a problem that's a violation of contract. So why, so why do we have them? Why don't we just have uh, valid contracts? Why, why don't we have contract court? It, it makes no sense. There's, there's hundreds or thousands of laws. Arbitrators. Right. That's what uh, originally what we had was just... Uh was just a basically an arbitrator that were agreed upon that was agreed upon by both parties and the arbitrator would make a ruling listen to both sides make the ruling it's over and you can solve a dispute between two people just w- with no law just w- in that specific case because the the specifics are always different you can solve it right then and there for those two people and it's done no law yep well what about people that are speeding dave Right. So if they exactly. if they you know if they hit somebody or whatever they've they've uh, damaged their property to some extent. So that's a you know you have property rights violations and you have contract violations. That, oh, that's all there is. That is all there is. So why do you need these laws? You don't need the laws. You need the government if you believe in it. If you believe it can actually do this to enforce private property rights and enforce contract. That's it. That's need- all they need to do. They don't need to pass any more laws. All these conservatives who people are voting for because we have to vote for it to fight back the liberals or whatever. Why are they why are they writing laws? Why are they passing laws? Why is anybody in the local government who claims they're a small government conservative passing and writing laws? Why? Enforce contracts, enforce private property rights, no problem. And the tools to do that are already there. Well, stop no, passing laws and stop writing laws. With no laws, though, there would be no revenue for the state. Oh, it's anarchy. It's, Dave, Dave, that's anarchy. Right, done, done, done. Isn't Which is the reason bad? for all the laws. Exactly right. And the, the crimes... That, that the violations of those laws they create are crimes against the state. Yep. There is no injured party. And even if there is an injured party, that injured party isn't made whole. The right. fine the, and yeah. restitution the fine is goes paid to the to state. The state. Right. And so, so the victim pays for the court. Yep. Uh, the victim pays for the police. The victim pays for the prosecutor. The victim pays for the DA. And the victim gets no compensation. The state gets all the compensation. Yep. Stop passing laws. Because basically what laws do is it's claiming ownership of your life, is claiming ownership of your property. Because now if you are violated, you have violated the state. You have violated my property. It's exactly what it is. You are the property of the state. If you don't think so, stand up against them. Resist them. Don't pay your taxes. You are the property of the state. When they pass those laws, it's basically what they're saying. I own these people. You will not violate them or you will pay me. We got lots of calls, dude. 458 Talk is a number. Good morning, caller. Welcome to Patriots Lament. Who's this? This is Michael. Michael, what's on your mind? Hey, once again, you guys are dancing all around the problem. It's money. We need honest money. And that money has to be based on a tangible item such as gold or silver or copper. We've had it in the past, and if you're facing an adversary who can just print money out of thin air, which is what the Federal Reserve Bank has the ability to do, then you will never win because you're up against unlimited, infinite funds. Right. That that's uh, that is the heart of the problem. Absolutely right. And why and why do we have to use the paper because of legal tender laws? Yeah, but uh, if we get back to the Constitution, our forefathers already foresaw the potential damage that would occur. Ron Paul, 2012. Thank you. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. Thomas Jefferson said he considered uh, banking institutions. Worse than standing armies. Oh no! More we're... dangerous than standing armies. Are you telling me that you're one of those Occupy Fairbanks people, Josh? No, you're I'm against, not. You're against the banks. Well, yeah. To, I mean, to the, the caller's banks. point, he makes a great point. If the Occupy people wanted, if they didn't want to take the philosophical mulligan of, of political action, 
they would be saying the same stuff he is. All of the financial problems and the, the inequity that they lament is due to legal tender laws in the Federal Reserve. Yep, and the That's fact exactly that we're right. forced to use that currency right. and none other. Yet again, we could ask the question about the state. And if the state really had the Tenth Amendment, if the state really had the right, then what the state could do is we could mint our own money here. We have well, gold. They don't, they we don't have Well, they don't even have to mint the money. They don't have to. Uh, the state actually should not be involved in the in the production or dis- distribution of money. All they have to do is say, in this state, Allow. people can trade in whatever they want, and it is not taxable. They can trade in non-taxable, non-dollar den- denominated currencies, whatever that may be, right? And then people can trade their Krugerrands or whatever. Which right. would allow other mints to produce. Yeah, the mints also. produce, and that's how it was originally done, is yep. the, the Constitution established the dollar as a weight of silver, but they didn't mint uh, they minted a few dollar, you know, s- silver rounds, but a lot of the minting was done by private banks. They just the, those banks had to mint and to I've, a certain. And I've asked the question before and have an un, uh, actually no negative responses. Everybody says that yes, they would use gold and silver if they were given that option. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. Who's this? Hey, how's it going? Hey, what's your name? Uh, this is Sam. Sam, what's yeah. on your mind? Well, the problem with voting is, first off, it's usually not much of a choice. You have more fascists or more fascists. You have bailouts or bailouts, or you have foreign wars or foreign wars. The second problem, and this addresses Randy's point, is you know he says, well, we've got to get all the freedom-loving people to vote to protect us from the fascists and the liberals who are going to vote to take away our freedoms. <clears throat> but what happens if you lose? What happens if you if you don't get enough freedom-loving people to vote? Well, then you just legitimize the process. Exactly. You legitimize them taking away your freedoms. So when you vote, you're actually saying that you agree to the system. You're supporting the system, and you're saying that you agree to abide by the results. So you're essentially legitimizing your own uh, loss of freedom. So that's what I see the problem is. That's an excellent an excellent point. I have absolutely nothing that I can say that would uh, counter anything that you just said. Thank you very much for the call. Problem. Four five eight talk is the number. Good morning, caller. All right, we've gone through the lines, gentlemen. We've only got about five minutes left in the show. Can we bring it to a to a head here? Can we bring it to an action point? If if our if voting is not necessarily the answer, maybe it's not the answer at all. If marching in the street is not the answer, is throwing things at people? I mean, I don't think viol- I don't think <laughs> no. violence is an answer. I mean, what nope, what do we do? I mean, bottom. just 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 an action point for today. What can I do today to avoid taking the mulligan? As you're talking about that that philosophical mulligan of, oh, I'm just going to go out and vote for one of these people because they tell me that's my choice. Well, I, you know, my opinion is that it's the um, ideas and philosophies that we as individuals hold that steers society, not the people in power. And the problem with the political system and the political avenues is it's a distraction from educating yourself. It's a distraction from formulating your own philosophy and uh, and testing it. And so I think if if more of us did that, right, if more of us understood our philosophy and had it down tight and could articulate it, you know, to our neighbors and whoever, that's how we would see a real change. Uh, you, you're not going to get that through any type of political action, period, because political action is the mulligan. It's us against them, right? As soon as you have any sort of political issue, you get factions. And the factions don't talk to each other. They, they yell at each other. And we're not going to get... We're not going to get any progress from yelling at each other either. So that's what I think it is. We have to go. We have to say, okay, do I understand why I believe this? Right? I'm, I'm for freedom. What does that even mean? And answer that question for ourselves. Logically reason in your own mind. What is liberty? And, and what if? Okay, let's say you don't have a starting point. Just just out, out of you know, maybe <laughs> our, our blog. Yeah. <laughs> you know. Okay, so, yeah, so we go can, to our blog. Yeah, we, we've been putting. Uh, we'll talk about. Um, we'll talk about something on the show. It's only an hour long. It's a radio show. We can't get into deep stuff. You're going to have to read if you want to understand something deeply. Yeah. And so we posted up some stuff to read and some YouTube videos to watch on the blog. It's patriotslament.blogspot.com. And not not everything's there. We don't have all the answers. We're wrong about stuff. I'm sure. Mm-hmm. Um, but it is a starting point if you have no other place to go. Um, I'm actually. I'm going to put up a video there later today. Um, Peter Schiff went down to Occupy Wall Street, on Wall Street, and he had this big sign behind him that said, I'm the 1%, let's talk. And so instead of just going on the radio and talking about all the stupid protesters, he he said, I'm going to go down and talk to these guys. And so he did. He tried to engage them. 
and the YouTube videos are really interesting because he didn't he didn't disrespect them or anything. They he got a lot of flack from them, but he was engaging these people in conversation, and that. That's the only way that we're going to move forward on this. The political factioning, the voting thing, it's not going to do it. That is not going to do it. And as long as we look to that, we delay doing the real hard work that's going to make a meaningful change, which is one-on-one, discussing philosophy, discussing ideas, discussing what liberty really means. And to do that, we have to understand you it You have ourselves. to know what you believe, and you have to know why you believe it so that you can have a meaningful discussion That's right, with and that's challenging. That's a lot more challenging than putting a bumper sticker on your car or going to vote. All right, so they're relying on someone else to decide what your liberties are, even though they have a little document that they swear an oath to that gives them the guideline. That actually, it's not just a guideline; it's a restriction on what they are. And yeah, and, it, well, and that's the thing too to keep in mind that the Constitution is not, in my opinion, I don't think it's some kind of a holy document. It's not in like some kind of a, a religious document that we go back to and say, oh, what is written in the Holy Constitution? It's not like that. No. These were men that were trying to come up with the best human government they could, and what they thought of doing was to basically put restrictions on government from coming in and telling everybody what to do. And that's why we have, that's why they enumerated the Ten Amendments, that, well, the first ten anyway, that specifically say uh, the government can't do this, the government can't do this, the government can't do that. I mean, the, the whole point of this right cannot be infringed. Why do they have that language if it's not to restrict government? Gentlemen, we're just about out of time here. Once again, that uh, Patriots the, Lament. No, the website's patriotslament.blogspot.com. All right. And if folks have any comments for us, if uh, they'd like to email us, do we have an email address? Yeah, it's patriotslament at uh, gmail.com. Patriotslament at gmail.com. Call Check your up. representative. Call the governor. Tell them to get off their butts and do something. Tell them to throw the feds out. Challenge them. I challenge them. I'm going to write them a letter. Throw the feds out of Alaska. Well, actually, they can walk around. I don't have a problem with that. Just but, don't uh, give them the opportunity to, don't give them the authority not to, to operate over, the way If what they're they doing is in violation of the Alaska Constitution, they why should do be, we have an Alaska they Constitution? They should be held as accountable as anybody else would. If I went and I tried to arrest you on the river because you did something I didn't like, I'd be thrown in jail. Yep. It'd be called piracy. And they should be, too. All right, we're out of time. Coming up next, it's Health Talk, and we will be back again next week at 10 a.m. Tell your friends, and check us out online, Patriots Lament at blogspot dot, is it org or com? PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. All right, PatriotsLament.blogspot.com. And we will see you again right here on KFAR Local Talk Radio 660 on your AM dial.